You guys know who Nick Cannon is, right? Nick Cannon has 12 kids. Nick Cannon. <laughs> Nick Cannon has 12 kids with six women, bro. He's just like slowly fallen off. He needs a vasectomy. If someone needs to like fucking snip this guy's balls, bro. He's gonna he's gonna overpopulate the earth. Corny, unfunny, not talented. I don't know. I just don't like him. These are some of the most common things you will hear whenever people are talking yeah, about Yeah, people him. hate Nick Cannon. These people are even more enraged to find out that he has 12 kids with six different women. Although many of God, own damn. Words and own actions are what caused him to be almost universal. I'm corny, dislike, true. The hatred towards him begins for such insignificant reasons. But his raps are so bad. He beefed with Eminem once. Nick I don't think I know him. You definitely will in a second reoccurring roles on Nickelodeon's All That and Keenan and Kel when he was a teenager. He also had various one-offs which led to him securing his own TV show, The Nick Cannon Show, in 2002. No, his music was trash, Cloud. It wasn't it. It was terrible. It was literally what ruined his career, his music this being that bad. from terrible reviews and was canceled after two short seasons. But the show being unfunny and unpopular is not necessarily the reason why he was- Six different women, I can't even get one. Bro, how does that feel that no, the Nick Cannon's getting more whammon than you? So had a Low value male, beta. Movie that same year, Drumline. This film highlighted- eight Yeah, Drumline was good. This was a good movie. About his music career, because it was so bad. It's literally, literally, you can't help but bring it up when you're dissing this guy. Incredible dedication and pride towards their elite marching band. Channel value. While the reactions and reviews for this film are mixed, fifty-seven million dollars in box. Drumline was good. Now Drumline was dope. Exactly, I like Drumline. Box office revenue proved that it was a hit. Nick was popular, but his roles never portrayed him as the cool kid or the tough guy. Sorry to the band kids out there, but y'all don't got the. Yeah, cool. you geeks. Hey, any band, any band people in chat? Coolest reputation. You guys are some nerds. Silly, but a lot of child stars become associated with their on-screen personality, leading to a warped perception of who they really are. And his next role did not change that. Perception. Love don't cost Love a thing. Love don't cost a thing. Where his character Alvin Johnson is a nerd who lacks any type of game or swag. Bro, it's Hefner. I'm <laughs> kidding. Force himself to be cool to land the most popular girl in school. Probably need to. Oh. <clears throat> is that Steve Harvey? Oh, pants up just a little bit. <laughs> Oh, see, these is Sean John, so I gotta get my swing on. Oh, Son, what ouch! What's up, Lethal? To your priorities. Guess I'm a nerd. Uh, oh, a good God, nerd. See, it was all about what was under the hood. Now I'm trying to be on top of the hood. Good Nick God! Roll so well that people still to this day think that that's who he truly is. I know he gets roasted for this movie too. Love don't cost a thing. He was plagued with the child star curse, where he can't escape the image of his early roles, and people assumed he was some sort of privileged trust fund baby since he was on TV. But most people don't know that Nick Cannon escaped gang life in Southern California. Nick's father James was one of the Damn, I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know he was a fucking gang life. Members of gang, the gang. Park Bloods, based out of Southeast San Diego, Damn. California. James and his girlfriend Beth had Nick when they were still in high school, which led to Nick growing up in the Bay Vista house Yikes. projects around the blood set. I mean, it's, it's still pretty impressive. Trouble, went to prison, came out reformed, and decided to move to North Carolina to live with his family. Hey, North Carolina, let's go, baby. One show Nick Cannon is on that I enjoy entirely. Yeah, Wild Now it's pretty good. Ministry. I fuck Nick with it. To be raised by his grandmother and I used to watch it a lot. James the freestyle battles are awesome. North Carolina and had more children. In C gang. Gang gang. James was a televangelist, which is a preacher that. Oof. Televangelists are pretty cringe. Appears regularly on local TV, broadcasting their sermons. Whenever Nick was with his family in North Carolina, he was in front of the camera, singing, dancing. His father even gave him a segment on his public access TV show to do his stand. Hey, looking swaggy. He was raised to be an entertainer. Dripper drown. Cali, he took those skills up to local clubs and open mics, and built up a name in Hollywood as an up-and-coming teenage performer. But he got his big break while performing at an event called Laffa Palooza in Atlanta. Where he <laughs> but I wish they still had stuff like this. Like, I, do they like they sell like these comedy clubs like these comedy uh like um where people go they try to make it the next big comedian dude do, do this does this still exist it's discovered by will smith's talent agency will was eager to meet nick and assisted him in getting an entertainment manager as well as his first record deal yes with really <laughs> so he walked in a room and like within five minutes i had pitched him a tv show my album all of that stuff and he was like yo you remind me so much of me he was like i'm gonna sign you up for everything damn Will Smith, he said, uh, Will Smith said, you remind me of me. And he did not live up to the Will Smith expectations whatsoever. And gave me like my it's the chat. Like 
Damn. was hoping that his music would revitalize his corny Nickelodeon image. And I'm hoping that you're interested in hearing about today's sponsor, The Ridge. I've hey, no free sponsors. My favorite one of variety. No, so you're playing. Again, you're paying me too. Peaked at no Patrick CC. Thanks, Ridge. No, so I'm Halo getting paid by Ridge. R. Kelly was the name of his single that. Peaked Oof. If his best song is featuring R. Kelly, that's not a good sign. Peaked at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 2004. At the time, R. Kelly was an icon. Not only did he carry the song, Yikes. but Nick being next to him made Nick look even less cool. The beginning of his music career was Ouch. the peak. He dropped a few singles after, but they never generated much buzz. By 2006, he stopped releasing music overall. So Nick was not the cultural icon that kids aspired to be, but he was extremely successful and was probably a better role model than most celebrities. I didn't even mention that he was an executive producer of Drumline and his Nickelodeon. Yeah, series. bro, like, he he was, like, in all these shows and on all these movies, and, like, he might not have done well, like, or had, like, the best roles, but he, like, he used producers and executives on all of them, which is pretty crazy. I knew that. He had two deals as a producer going. He had a deal with Jive Records that he had pretty much, like, negotiated along with his team, but he was very much in charge of his business. Nick was in a boss-like position that no other child- Wait, he dated Kim K? I didn't know that. Yeah, his next big move would help him gain some cool points, but he was often still the butt of the joke. Wild and Out is easily- Oh, shit. Yes. Which is a sketch comedy and- Dude, Wild and Out is, is honestly so successful because it's been around since, like, you know, the late 1990s, I think, and it's still going on to this day and still successful as fuck game show that had celebrity guests each episode. It was a destination place for fans of comedy and hip-hop. The show has been running since 2005. Oh shit, well maybe not, well early 2000s. With over 20 seasons, Nick decided that he didn't want all the success for himself. He had Will Smith reach down and bring him up, so he was gonna do the same for others. A lot of people forget so how freaking funny. Nick helped amplify by starting this show. Cat Williams, Pete Wait, Davidson. really? Pete Davidson started out wild and out? I believe that. DC Young Fly. I do not like DC Young Fly. He's easily like the least entertaining, most obnoxious part of Wild and Out. I, Taron Killam, Timothy De La Ghetto, I like Ian Tim, Rocket, D. Ray Davis, Mikey Day, and many others. Nick was the host and producer, so he was very often the punching bag. And in comedy, anything goes, so they never held back. Yeah, they, bro. Honestly, it's his own show, and he's always the butt of everyone's jokes. Really, everyone loves DC. Fuck no, they don't. Bro, I, I know a lot of people who, who like don't like the show just because of DC. Considered Nick to be Justine. I like Justine. I like them all. I mean, I like Emmanuel Phillips. I, I like them. I like everyone. But dude, DC Fly, fuck no. The funniest or the most talented on the show. He still took it in stride because he just secured a crown jewel as a wife, Mariah Carey. Just a few weeks after meeting, Nick proposed to the 220 times platinum Jeez. superstar. It was hard to hate on Nick now. He was winning. He may be an easy target. Mariah for Carey, but Mariah Carey is kind of cringe, right? Like she's always doing some fuck shit. But he was now a 10 year veteran and undeniably successful and pretty humble. But there was one. It's his old friend and told him and told on him in front of the crowd. Like told him on, over what? One person who was very angry about Nick and Mariah's relationship. Eminem. And he had yes, this is where his, this is where the fuck is Matt Rife. Nick Cannon is the culprit of the world's population surplus. That's what we were talking about. I was just saying, I was just saying that we need to get him a vasectomy, snip his balls so the world doesn't become overpopulated. Dang, why is this such a shitty picture of Eminem? How did I not know who this is till now? I don't want a lot for Chris. Okay, we're not getting that. Oh, he basically used Emmanuel. Damn, this is not a good picture of fucking Eminem. They did him dirty. What do you say about it. Eminem and Mariah Carey had a public back God damn. that began after a short alleged relationship that started around 2001. Eminem says that they dated, had sex, all that. Mariah Dude, Eminem killed. Like, so Nick Cannon and what's up, Gabby? Nick Cannon and fucking uh, Eminem. Uh, they had like a rap battle, rap beef, and fucking Eminem destroyed him. God damn, it's so bad. Says God. Did you date him? No. Can I just clarify that I did not have a physical relationship with him? I did not have a, an intimate Why relationship. Why are you so obsessed with me, Inspo? For years. Mostly instigated by Eminem. But in two you guys want to hear the fucking Eminem Nick Cannon diss track? I feel like we should watch it for context. I don't remember which one it is. The Imitation Eminem Dis. The Warning. Yeah. Only reason I dissed you in the first place. 
cause you did not see me. Now I'm pissed off. Sit back, homie, relax. In fact, grab a six pack, kick back while I kick facts. Yeah, Bro. track. Perfect way to get back. Eminem might not be the one of the best rappers, but he had one of the best diss tracks. I'm obsessed now. Oh, geez, that's supposed to be me in the video with the goat teeth. Wow, Mariah didn't expect it to go balls out. But shut the fuck up before I put all them phone calls out. You made to my house when you was wildin' out. Before Nick, when you was on my dick, and give you something to smile about. Damn. I know. Who's talking about that, Gabby? Probably think cause it's been so long If I had something on you I would've did it by now Oh on the contrary Mary Poppins I'm mixing a studio session down And sending it to mastering to make it loud Enough dirt on you to murder you This is what the fuck I do Mariah it ever occur to you that I still have pictures Bro damn Eminem was fucking petty Does it ever occur to you I still have pictures Bro Oh my god the F slur For Nick too Oh shit You think I'm scared of you you gonna ruin my career? You better get one. <laughs> oh my god. Bro, Eminem was wild. 2009, he took it too far. The first verse on the track titled Bagpipes from Baghdad was entirely about Mariah. Mariah, whatever happened to us? Why did we have to break up? Nick Cannon better back the fuck up. I'm not playing. I want her back, you punk. Then he proceeds to call her the C word and said, Nick, <laughs> damn, you had your fun. I've come to kick you in your sack of junk. He also said, <laughs> Nick, you've had your fun. I've come to kick you in your sack of junk. Nice. Says, I wish you luck with war. As you can imagine, Nick wasn't very happy with Eminem's words. His immediate response came from a lengthy blog post on his website. In this post, Nick kind of describes how his thought process was evolving as he listened to the song. He said he initially Damn. had respect for him. Then he was confused because he heard his name. Then he says he felt sorry for Eminem. And he says, what type of grown ass man lies about getting with a chick? Only Slim Lamey, LOL. Slim Lamey, good one, Nick. Then I asked myself, should I go find this bitch and whoop his little ass? And then he says, I'm taking full action on you, Eminem. I don't know why no one has stood up to your bitch ass yet, but I guess it's going to take a corny, whack rapping boy toy from Nickelodeon to set you straight. As a Jesus. matter of fact, I think you're going to bring my whack rhymes out of retirement. Your legacy has now been tainted from this day forth. You will now be known as the rapper who lost to corny ass Nick Cannon. Nick couldn't have responded. Bro, even her first time. What is this outfit? Jesus Christ, chat. The early 2000s were a fucking hell of a time, bro. Not anymore. Well, corny way. He admits to being corny. He knows that's what people think about him. And I think him admitting it solidified it forever. I don't I know if you never, want that. I don't I know if you never. want that problem rapping with Nick Cannon. Fish. I would never respond to Nick Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> never. Let's look. Damn. Now, look, look, Not 50. Not 50. Right. He's yeah. legendary corny. <laughs> He's been corny forever. Like, Nicky damn. Claims that he went looking for Eminem. Grandma's kitchen attire. Uh, almost. Oh, so he was talking about you kicking Who else was going to kick his ass? I went looking for that motherfucker. We had, we had this conversation. Bro, why is he wearing a turban? What the fuck? Unsurprisingly, Nick never actually did anything. It was actually Mariah who handled the situation by dropping an absolute smash diss track called Obsessed. The wait! Wait! Mariah dropped a diss track on Eminem? I had- Wait, what? He wears it all the time? I did not know about this. Wait, this was about Eminem? Damn, I did not know Mariah had it like that. The reason why Mariah's diss was so cutthroat was because it was catchy, fun, and petty. Eminem turned on the radio and heard the girl that rejected him, but he couldn't help but get the chorus stuck in his head. Then when he watched the music video, he saw himself Winsies. being depicted as a creepy stalker. Eminem quickly responded with a diss called The Warning, where he held back nothing. The lyrics in this song are so brutal. Jesus. Today about a woman, you'd lose everything you have. Yeah, bro. Eminem fans think that Eminem won. Mariah fans think that she won. Fuck. And both fan bases agreed that Nick <laughs> Cannon lost. Poor Nick Cannon, just taking L's. So many diss tracks, I know. He didn't beat up Eminem. He didn't make him apologize. He swore up and down that he tried everything to get face to face with him, but he actually made it worse. This guy's good, bro. He's gone. He's like freestyle. Someone's signed this guy. This was Nick's attempt at promoting his new record called White People Party Music. Nick posted what? this photo on Instagram. It's official. I'm white. Hashtag white people party. What the music. fuck? In stores April 1st. Dude, go get it. Join the party. Hashtag good credit. Dog kissing. Beer pong. Farmers market. What the fuck is this? Bro, what? Angry people. Cream, cream cheese eating? Okay, that's too far. Listen, us white people can take a lot, but cream cheese eating? 
Come on. This is whiteface. This is a double standard. Because if a white person did this, it would get them canceled forever. But many other people point Bruh. out that whiteface isn't actually. Yeah, I love cream cheese. Yeah, okay. Don't in the don't play the stereotype. Industry, white people used to paint themselves black and act in a very discriminatory and derogatory manner for other white people's shameful and. What the fuck? There is no history of whiteface. This is fricked. People were not actually offended, but everyone, no matter what race you were, agreed that it was unfunny. Yeah. And did not make them want to listen to his. Yeah, nobody wants to listen to a meme album. Like one meme, if you make one meme song as like a like a TikTok meme nowadays, no one cares. But a whole meme album, come on, bro, that is corny. Album. In fact, he even deleted it off all platforms to this. Damn. He also said this. Anything racist happened to you recently? Uh, I don't really look at it like that because I'm the racist. Mm. You're the racist. I'm the I'm very racist. I'm blatantly Please racist. Tell us what the I'm fuck? I'm so proud of it. Before. I am <laughs> proud to be racist. Okay. I mean, because when you think about what racism actually is, or, or Wait, a racist, it's one who believes their race is superior over certain things. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? What the fuck? That I believe my race is superior at. For example, sex category. Oh, oh. It's what? Bro! Dude, Nick Kanye was Kanye before Kanye. It's to tell if this is a joke or not, because there's clearly an edit made in the video. You can see when Rosenberg asks for an explanation, there was something redacted, but people didn't think it was a joke. They just used that as a justification to hate Nick Cannon even more. What is wrong with us, dude, sir? In 2016, there was no drama, bad blood, or a messy story. A clean break. What just did he say? They divorced. He already yeah, what did they say the redacted version? What else? He had another child named Golden Saigon with Brittany Bell. But for Golden the Saigon? Years, was living rent free in Nick's head, despite the fact that Nick was making huge money moves. Wild and Out was over a decade old. Bro, what the fuck is with this turban? Still successful. He had become the chairman of Nickelodeon and helped them revive their teen Nick brand. He was the host of America's Got Talent, had a deal with Viacom that allowed him to produce any show he wanted on VH1. And Damn! He He's popping off low key. NBC, had an extensive list of- I have no idea, Mickle. Sayagon. Some TVs, movies, shorts, comedy specials, you name it, Nick Cannon has done it. But he still wanted to get it. Jesus Christ! He's not done any dental work, that's for sure. M motherfucker, brush your teeth! <laughs> God! Sounds like a legendary Pokemon, a shiny Pokemon. Eminem. Everybody knows I would love Eminem to be on Wild and Out. Y'all go convince Marshall. Then over the years, he was constantly rehashing the old Mariah story on various podcasts, talking about how he really wanted to beat Love. up Eminem. Eventually, it got M's attention, and he responded on a song with Fat Joe called Lord Above. I know me and Mariah didn't end on a high note, but that other dude's whipped that he got him neutered. Almost got my caboose. Jesus! Oh, quit. You not gonna do sh I let her chop my ball off too, for I lost to you, Nick. Then Nick responded with not one, not two, but three diss tracks of his own. Yikes! That's a fact. This the invitation. Told Joe to lean back. Don't get hit with this retaliation. Bro, how does he go from those corny ass outfits, the white boy party anthem or white people celebration anthem, and then like that fucking outfit, the sweater vest, and the tie to this? What in the fuck? What the fuck? Christopher Columbus. Nick Cannon trying to act tough on a record just doesn't really work for him. No. The only reason he dissed Eminem was for the sport of hip hop and ultimately to get him on his show Wild and Out. He thought he was about to ignite a back and forth rap beef, but Eminem never responded. Well, he did tweet that he demanded an apology from Nicholas. Of course, Nick didn't apologize Jesus. to Eminem, but he did apologize to a different group of people for some comments he made what bro i told you nick kenyon was kanye before kanye was kanye why was nick kenyon being fucking anti-semitic what is with these fuckers on a podcast a few months later nick posted a canon's class podcast episode with professor griff griff was an ex-member of the rap group public enemy who got kicked out of the group in the 80s for making anti-semitic comments the main comments that got him fired were and we're defining who the Jewish where people he gets are. It from. I feel like if we actually can understand that construct, then we can see that there is no hate involved. Bro, a clown. Bro. The lies. No joke, bro. What the fuck is this shit? Bro, I was watching this other podcast, um, and there's a guy named Abba on it who's black, and then um, a guy named Destiny who's white. Um, it was a stream, but it was kind of like a podcast format. And Abba was talking about how there's like a deep-rooted anti-Semitism in the black community uh not in in the as a whole but as far as like hip-hop and they were showing like 50 cent had a anti-semitic streak 
I guess now Nick Canyon, Kanye, and they brought up some other rappers. How like uh, in the old old hip hop, there was like this like this like little streak of anti-Semitism, uh, and now it's like bubbled up with Kanye. The deceit. The and uh, there was all these uh, rappers and these uh, these like songs and stuff that were straight up like I I didn't even know. Um, and there was just super anti-Semitic shit all over it. Uh, how the the fake dollar controls all of this nick then goes on a long tangent about how non-melanated people lack the power of the sun and out of jealousy they decided to become soulless savages who destroy people of color and he discussed how he feels about the powerful people who control this country and was accused of spreading conspiracy theories jesus a statement while we support ongoing education and dialogue in the fight against bigotry we are deeply troubled that nick has failed to acknowledge or apologize for perpetuating anti-semitism and we are terminating our relationship Christ Nick then Viacom is huge 1500 word essay about his relationship with Viacom an apology to the Jewish community and ending with a statement that Viacom is on the wrong side of history and that he demands full ownership of the wild and out brand and an apology but Jeez. They and the way this situation ended was by Nick doing a full-on apology press tour where he went on various major media platforms condemning anti-semitism redacting his comments and educating himself by having conversations with Jewish people on how to not further the anti-Semitic rhetoric. He got his deal back with Viacom and in celebration decided to have 10 more children. <laughs> what? That's how you celebrate having 10 more kids? In, in the span of three years. December 23rd, 2020, his child Powerful Queen was born to mother- Powerful Bell. Queen? That's her name? Good night, Mickle. Bell. Six months later, his children Zion Mixolydian and Zillion Air were born to Zillion Air and Zion Mixolydian? But these sound like prescription medicines. De La Rosa. Then just two weeks after that, he had another child named Zen, born to mother Alyssa Scott, who unfortunately died of brain cancer just Holy fuck! Six months later. In June of 2022, one year later, he had his child Legendary Love with mother Brie Tiesi. Then September 14th of this year, he had child Onyx Cole with mother Lanisha Cole. And two weeks after that, he had another child, Rise Messiah, with mother Brittany Bell. Jesus! He announced that he's expecting another child with Abby De La Rosa and another child with Alyssa Scott. So Nick is basically getting three different women pregnant. For those kids go to public school, get bullied to no end. First of all, for being Nick Canyon, Nick Canyon. Why keep on saying Canyon? Nick Canyon's fucking offspring, the fucking anti-Semitic corny dude. <laughs> and then these fucking names. And at the same time, two years in a powerful queen, I guess, is okay. Bro. Now, he's been subject to a lot of criticism for his procreation, but not enough criticism on the choice of these kids' names, though. He's made it very clear that this is his intention. He wants to have this many kids, and he sees this as a blessing. I know you said you won't call him a bad dad, but I will. He's not Jeez. He may be kind to them and give them all the financial security and things they'll ever need or want, but he'll never be able to give them the attention and hands-on love they need. I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess it's a free country. Like, if you want to have fucking 12 kids, go for it. But Jesus. Nick has assured people that when he isn't working, he's spending all his free time with his kids and giving them the But they were all the different mothers. I don't understand if it's with, like, one or two moms. But, like, he has to go to, like, all the different Christmases, all the different, like, fam like, do all the moms live in the same house? Do they all meet up? Like, what? They need. I mean, he better keep working because he's going to need like $100 million to make sure these kids live a good life. But I'm sure these kids Jesus. will be grateful he amassed a fortune for them. I only saw my dad once every other week for my whole life, and I love him. People aren't quick to defend Nick Cannon because he doesn't have an extensive artistic catalog that is universally loved. But if we are being honest, he has had an incredible career, and I mean, the fact yeah. that he escaped the projects and built an empire for him and his family is admirable. He definitely let his ego get the best of him at times, and as a successful man that is bound to happen, he may be corny, he may have a questionable view on a healthy family dynamic, he may have <laughs> said some bold and irrational Jesus. things, but there are worse role models. I think he's still overhated. But in 20 years, it's likely that Nick will probably end up in the same beef that 50 Cent has with his son today. Hopefully he doesn't wish- So he wouldn't care if his son got hit by a bus? Wait, what? His son to get hit by a bus. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, check out this. 50 Cent- Wait, first of all, you know, closing that Nick Canyon th Nick Canyon. Fuck it, we're calling him Nick Canyon from now on. Nick Canyon's a fucking L, bro. Like, what the fuck? But 50 Cent was his son dead? And his son-